The Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. How come you never notice things like that on a Saturday? Well, I just happen to notice it now. And I could clean it up good while you're in town. Oh, well, what about school? School? School. Oh. Well, Miss Adams says I'm doing good and missing one day wouldn't hurt. Much. All right, son, you can swamp out the barn. After you get back from school. I'm on up. We're riding together. Good day, son. Same to you, Paul. for the doctor, Paul? Well, I hope you won't have to, son. We'll see. Boy, someone sure doesn't like school. Johnny Clover. What? Nothing, Paul. You mean Johnny Clover did this? I don't mean nothing. Uh, uh. Is that him? Is that him? Well, you seem to be all right. Uh, oh, good heavens. You, you better go for the doctor, sir. No, no, Mark. I, no, I, I'm all right, Mr. McCain. Are you sure? It's just the shock of seeing all this destruction. Uh, yeah. What happened? Well, I... I opened the school and... and came into the room just as I do every morning and... Well, someone grabbed me, put his hand over my mouth, and I, I struggled. I, well, I guess I fainted. You know who it was? No, no, I, I didn't see him. Could it have been Johnny Clover? What gave you that idea? Me, Miss Adams. I saw the picture. Oh, there isn't anyone else who could draw like that. I wonder if anything was stolen. He's not a thief, Mr. McCain. Well, Miss Adams, don't you think you'd better look anyway? Well. Johnny Clover, do I know him, son? Yeah. 
piece of boy whose pa was killed in the stampede last year's roundup. Oh, yes, and his uncle came out here to take care of him in the ranch. That's him. Oh, well, Johnny must be pretty big. Eighteen or more, isn't he? I guess so. He sure did look funny in class. You children made that very plain to him, Mark. Well, it's true, Miss Adams. Most of the time, we try not to laugh. Then you stopped laughing when you saw how well he knew his lessons. Yes, ma'am. He's a very smart boy, Mr. McCain, and a good student. He just never had a chance to settle in school. He and his pa were always moving around so much. Well, that's too bad, but he sure settled this school. Was anything taken? Just some paper and crayons. I don't know why. He could have had them for the asking. Well, we'd better go see the marshal. No. I don't want to make any trouble for the boy. Well, it looks to me like he's made the trouble himself. I know, but I... I want him to come back to school, Mr. McCain. Or maybe even go off to a better one. He has a wonderful mind and a wonderful talent. Well, that's your choice, Miss Adams, but... Speaking as a member of the school board, we'll want someone to pay for this damage. Well, turning him into the marshal's office accomplish that? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll ride out and talk to the boy's uncle, see if he's willing to put things straight to, before we bring in the law. All right? That's better. McCain. I know. I seen you around town. Your nephew around? What you want him for? Well, I'd like to talk to him. And to you. Uh, about what? School. Oh, yeah. You'll be on the school board, huh? That's right. Yeah, and Johnny ain't been going. I know about that, but taint my doing. I made that clear to school, Marm. Boy wants to go, he can go. He, he just stopped himself. He can read and write and figure, and I guess he thinks that's all man needs to know to feed himself. Can't say I blame him. Oh? Oh, not that I don't hold with education, I do. But the man can have too much of it. She had him wasting good working time drawing pretty pictures. Now, that's nothing for a boy near a man to be doing. I reckon that's why he stopped going to school. He's been to school, Mr. Fremont. Been? He broke into the school this morning. Oh? Smashed everything up. Desks, chairs, tore up school books. That's, that's terrible. Terrible. Well, it's going to cost quite a bit to repair the damage. Are you expecting me to pay for it? He's your nephew, Mr. Fremont. Yeah, yeah but uh, cash ain't exactly a heavy crop around here. Well, I'm sure we can come to some kind of an arrangement. Well, maybe so, maybe so. I'll have to think on it. You uh, going to put the law on the boy? No, Miss Adams doesn't want to. It certainly won't repair any of the damage. Well, that's nice of you, Mr. McCain. That's real nice. Now, you give me a little spell of time, and I'll figure out something to pay for what the boy done. Of course, Mr. Fremont. I'm glad you're being so cooperative. That's nothing, nothing at all. Oh, and you can tell your nephew that in spite of what he's done, Miss Adams still wants him to come back to school. Yeah, I'll tell him that. Of course, I can't make him go, but I'll tell him. Goodbye. Cooperative. Oh, You're wasting no time on that drawing and I remember you telling me that. I remember you making that quite clear in our first talk as we was walking back from Pa's burying. Ain't no kin of mine going to be any better than me. 
I ain't gonna have you uppity and fancy talking and looking down on your uncle the way the rest of them does. That's right. Yeah, but you got no cause bringing trouble on this house. Strangers demanding money for your stinking tricks. Well, I'm gonna take it out of your hide in advance. You ain't gonna love me. Boy, don't you tell me what I'm going to do. Boy sure made a mess out of them school benches. Well, I can fix them. Gonna have to put in a couple of new crossbars, though. Oh? So, how much will it cost me? Well, I remember I'm not spending my own money. This is school board tax money, and I can be real tight about it. I'll charge you for the materials and throw the labor in free. Well, I guess I can't ask for more than that. You could throw in the materials, Paul. Mark. <laughs> hey, you're raising a real Yankee trader, Luke. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Mark. I'll give you the best price I got. Nothing. And will you buy a ticket to the covered dish picnic? <laughs> it's going to be at our place to help raise money for the torn books. Uh, 25 cents. I never see the beat of it. Now it's going to cost me. Johnny Clover's drunk and shooting up the saloon. Enough celebrating. Now, put the gun away. The gun? Better do like Micah says. I don't have to put no gun away. You don't know when to stop selling liquor, do you? I didn't sell him a drop, Marshal. He came in like that. That's right. He wouldn't sell me nothing. I've been drinking my Uncle Gus's bottle, and it was all gone, and I wanted some more. Just put the gun away. What for? You don't want any more trouble than you've already got, do you? More trouble? More oh, school. Yeah, you told my Uncle Gus about that, and he tried to lick me. We ain't gonna do that no more. You know why? Because today, I licked him. I wailed the living daylights out of him! Oh. And that's why I'm celebrating. And now, the celebration's over. Oh, it is. Just put the gun away. Now, you put your gun away. <laughs> All right, son. Now, what are you going to do, wallop me if I did? No, I'm not going to wallop you. I bet you wallop hard. Hey, can he, Mark? Stay out of here, Mark. No, you stay there. No, you, as a matter of fact, you come on in here. Stay out, son. You come in here, or I'm going to shoot your old man. That's the way. If you hurt him. I'm not gonna hurt nobody. I just wanna ask him a question. What? <laughs> now he walks, I don't he? My pa never wallops me. What? All right, Johnny, you got your question answered. Now put the gun away. But that ain't fair. I've been walked almost every day of my life. You mean to tell me that now he's never smacked you? Keep quiet, son. That ain't fair. That just ain't fair. Miss McCain, you wallop him. Johnny, listen to me. Shut up! You gotta lick kids. That's what my Uncle Gus says. That's the only way to raise a kid. Now you lick him good. Lucas. It's all right, Micah. Now, what are you doing? Gotta have something to wallop him with, don't I? Come here, son.
You do well apart, Miss McCain. Well, it was no more than you deserved, boy. You're right, sir. I don't know what come over me. I've been doing some pretty wild things. What did you have against the school? Yeah, Miss Adams told me you liked going to school. Well, I do. I did. I, I, I want to. You got a mighty poor way of showing it. I don't know what got into me. I was run by the school. Well, all I meant to do was to go in and get some paper and crayons. Well, Miss Adams said you could have had those for the asking. Well, I know. Well, I didn't want to talk to her. Well, she's always talking to me about how I should really be going to school. How I should maybe go away and study drawing pictures. Well, I couldn't stand to hear that. Maybe. But you did a lot more than just take paper and crayons. I know. Well, I was in there, and it come over me. How it wasn't fair. How if I couldn't go to school on account of my Uncle Gus, how if he made me say that I didn't want to, then it wasn't fair. Then they shouldn't be able to go either. Well, I, I just smashed everything. You sure did. Well, I didn't want them to have something I couldn't have. Just the dog in the manger. I guess so, Marshal. I I'm sorry. That don't put back together what you smashed. And in the saloon, you might have killed somebody. Yes, sir. You got a lot to pay for, boy. You figure your uncle will stand good the damage? I won't ask him. I'm, I ain't going back there anymore. I'll get a job. I'll pay you back somehow. Well, that's right thinking. You could give him a job, Paul. There's a lot of work to be done around our barn. Would you, Mr. McCain? Why should I, Johnny, after what you've done? I don't know why. Just would you? Please? Paul? All right, Johnny. Lucas, don't be a fool. Fremont's an ornery man, and he won't take kindly to you helping the boy. Like a, I figure I'm helping myself by hiring a hand. I'll pay you ten dollars a month and found. You can start paying the school back out of that, all right? Well, all right. Yes, sir. How's Fremont? Isn't going to like me. Like a, I'm a neighborly man. You know that. But if you happen to run into Gus Fremont, you tell him I'm not feeling too neighborly to him. You can tell him if he shows his face around my spread, I'll treat him for just what he is—a trespasser. Oh, come on. Come on. You too. So long, Mike. Hello, Freeman. My nephew's here, ain't he? was. You let him go? No reason to hold him. I heard he shot up the saloon. That's right, he did. But nobody made any charges against him, and he's going to pay for the damage he did. Just what's anyone think he's going to use for money? Well, he's got himself a job. With who? Lucas McCain. Lucas McCain. I wouldn't figure on tangling with McCain was I you, Fremont. Now, why don't you drop the whole thing? You're living free and clear in the boy's land. So why don't you just forget the boy and... I don't forget easy, Marshal. You can tell McCain that for me. I don't forget easy at all! <laughs> Seven dollars and fifty cents, Mr. McCain. You'll have books to spare. <laughs> well, 
seem to be having a good time. Mm. Are they going to do the square dancing before or after the food? Oh, after. Men feel they need their strength. It's been such a long time since the woman of Norfolk has had an excuse for dancing. <laughs> Here you are, Miss Adams, two dollars. My goodness, I thought you were only going to charge one dollar. I was, but that's from Mr. Hamilton. He thought the picture's worth two. Well... Well, the way folks are buying your pictures, Johnny, looks like you'll be able to pay for the books yourself. Yeah, sure, wish I could. You're doing just fine, Johnny. But Johnny! I was looking for you. Them pictures you've been drawing. You, uh, think you can do one of me? Oh, I sure can. Got your work cut out for you now, Johnny. Uh, he has that, Lucas. I had one of them photographers take a picture of me once. It didn't turn out much good somehow. What was the matter to him? He looked too much like you? <laughs> <laughs> That's just what the trouble was. You think you can do better, Johnny? No, I'll try. Let's uh, go over there. Yeah? Okay. Come on, Paul. The three-legged race is going to start. Right with you, son. Excuse me, Miss Adams. <laughs> Come on, everyone. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Hey, son. Just relax. Put your Johnny, how long? Fremont! Hello, boy. You and me got a lot to settle. Fremont, don't. You stay out of this. You aren't gonna do anything. Boy, I'm gonna give you a real education. I'm gonna lick you within an inch of your life. <laughs> bullet through your drawing hand. Stick it out. Stick it out or I'll shoot it where it is. Kind of scary going east to a big school. Almost makes me wish I hadn't sold a ranch after Uncle Gus lit out. You'll do fine, Johnny. I've written them all about you. Goodbye. Hey, I got uh, something here so you and your pa won't forget me. It doesn't exactly look like you, but uh, it's kind of the way you feel to me. All right, Miss Adams. Bye. 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 